<laughs> ah, that's funny. Well, everything is when you're a giant hyena, Pachy Procuta. If you want to picture how animals from ancient times look like, just imagine them way bigger with larger and sharper teeth. And wait, like that isn't enough? Yep, you had to be one mighty beast to survive in such times when everything around you is like 5XL. This hyena was up to 3 feet tall with a weight of 400 pounds. That's the size of a modern lion and around three times bigger than today's hyena. The ancient one also had shorter legs, which is also the reason plenty of prehistoric creatures went extinct. Over time, they ran out of food, but couldn't run fast or long enough to catch prey. Also, they couldn't escape quickly enough if there was some bigger guy nearby. Ancient and modern hyenas have quite similar habits. Diet, meat, meat, and meat. <laughs> they both prefer to steal fruit from other usually smaller predators rather than go hunting on their own. And of course, they're both always smiling at everyone around. Cheese. You always somehow picture sharks as those marine animals we should be afraid of, right? Not whales, they're mostly good-natured, eating their plankton, spraying out water through that hole in their backs and stuff. And of course, they could get a little clumsy from time to time, so they turn over a ship. Anyway, they're not that into hunting humans. Well, if we all lived in the time of this 50-foot, 50 50-ton 50 whale, Livia time, I like to call toothy. Let's just say going to the beach would never be the same. The beast weighed like six elephants and was longer than a truck. Oh yeah, about that toothy thing? This whale had teeth longer than your palm and a quite refined hunting instinct. So it went after all marine animals, including other whales too. Its only rival was the megalodon itself, the only biggest and scariest shark that ever lived on our planet. Okay, of course, this list is full of giant and dangerous animals with extra sharp teeth who you're certainly glad they went extinct. But there's also some close relative to a human ancestor here too. Hello, um, distant cousin? Paranthropus. So our cousin P had a big brain, well at least for those times, and good reflexes, which is why they could defend themselves against some bigger and less brainy creatures that were after them. They mostly ate plants, roots, nuts, soft fruits, young leaves, probably insects, and seeds. They were around 5 feet tall and 150 pounds in weight. Not that big compared to other prehistoric mammals, but still big enough to survive those tough times. Way to go, P! The next one is, yes, I'm very happy these things went extinct, <laughs> prehistoric mammal, Gorgonopsia. They were something between mammals and reptiles with, of course, very, very big 5-inch saber-like teeth, an 18-inch long skull, and the size of a modern bear. At their beginnings, these guys were really small, no bigger than a dog. After a while, evolution did its thing and turned them into the biggest carnivores of their time, which was over 250 million years ago. I wasn't around then. Scientists still don't know if they had clear skin, fur, or scales, but they do know these beasts had rather long legs compared to the rest of their body, which means they could run much faster than many other animals from those times. Andrew Sarchis, or Andy, my nickname for it, is everything you would attribute to today's predators, such as tigers, wolves, or hyenas. Only a bit more intimidating version, of course, with extremely sharp teeth. Who would have thought the biggest meat-eating mammal that ever lived is actually a part of the family where pigs, camels, and antelopes came from? It had the size of a modern bison, with a weight of at least half a ton. Andy wasn't that picky with the menu, so it went after most other animals that lived back then, which was around 40 million years ago. It seems ancient times were those where tigers or some other predators were afraid of pigs, unlike today. Yup, step back, Terminator pig, Entelodon, is on its way. Okay, research actually showed they were more like hippos, whales, and its cousin Andy. But this cool nickname has already been given, so we can't go back. Early Terminator pigs were no bigger than today's swines, but they grew to become cow size over time. They also had short snouts, but a couple of million years later, evolution decided that's not scary enough and made their lower and upper jaws much longer. Oh, and they got an even sharper set of canines, a special How to Creep Your Rivals edition. Whew! Finally, an ancient mammal we don't have to be afraid of. 
Well, at least if we're not in its way, because if this giant accidentally stepped on you, squish. But at least its menu consisted of plants, so we would be safe at some point. Let me introduce you to the gentle giant Thunder Beast, Brontothurium. It had quite a sturdy nasal horn, weighed 3 tons, and was 16 feet in length, which is bigger than a modern rhino. The size, unfortunately, didn't help it much. Andy was always just breathing down its neck, preying at it and its companions. Such a list definitely can't go without the menacing saber-toothed cat. Around 4 feet long, 100 pounds, agile, completely capable of hunting in coordinated packs. But you know cats, they like to brag about the catch they got on their own. That's our Megat, Megaterion. You can find her and her companions all over the world, in Europe, Asia, North America, and Africa. Now we often think all big cats are into running after their prey, but Megan wasn't built for speed at all, nor did it sprint after her prey like some other cats. No, no, she preferred to wait for the prey to get closer. She would choose a good spot, climb up some tall tree, hide, and simply chill. After a while, some innocent herbivores would go there to drink some water and BAM! Surprise! Megan's down! Her hunting style is something we see in leopards today. Teeth were her main weapon, so gotta watch out for those big upper canines. Oh, finally a name I can more easily pronounce, so I don't have to come up with my own. The giant short-faced bear. This beast could run up to 40 miles per hour. After it cornered its prey, the bear would rear up to its full height, 13 feet, so the poor animal knew nothing good was about to come. Cave bears usually prefer vegetables, but as far as this short-faced one was concerned, nah, meat is way better. It liked to hunt as well as collect what other predators would leave behind. Also, as far as is known, apparently no one ever asked this short-faced bear, hey, why the long face? <laughs> Leo, the prehistoric lion, Thylacolio. Gee, sounds like a pharmaceutical. Anyway, 5 feet long, 200 pounds, insanely strong jaws, sharp teeth, long retractable claws, muscular body. Hey, it's me! No, not really. It also had a surprisingly powerful tail. Leo actually comes from the land down under, where ancestral kangaroos live, and they also had quite strong tails to balance themselves. Okay, speaking of kangaroos, here's one small surprise. Leo's roots. You would think kangaroos, koala bears, and giant wombats were there just to live a happy life until they became someone's breakfast. But their family somehow raised an animal that looked like a saber-toothed tiger but with bigger teeth. Yes, Leo, way to go, breaking the stereotypes. Leo was somewhere at the top of the food chain in his times, even though he had one quite strong rival, a giant monitor lizard, Megalania or even some plus-sized crocodile, Quincana. Okay, okay, move guys, this is not a video about reptiles, wait your turn! Prehistoric age, dinosaurs ruled all over the region, making a mess while other animals shiver in fear and hide from them. Hey, not so fast, dinos! There's Mr. R, Repenomamus, a mysterious mammal that decided to stand up to the authorities. He showed up 130 million years ago and was a badger-like 3-foot-long animal. Doesn't sound much compared to the T-Rex and bigger dinos, but was way bigger than some of those feathery dinosaurs from the same time. Not only that, he would eat them. We don't know how exactly, but let's just say Mr. R had his own ways. I'm guessing it was for breakfast.